So let's talk a little bit about insulin resistance and diabetes. Uh, according to the CDC, more than 37 million people in the U.S. have diabetes. One in five don't even know that they have it. Type 2 diabetes accounts for about 90 to 95% of all those diagnosed cases. And diabetes is the eighth leading cause of death in the U.S. And a lot of those cases may be underreported. Medical costs for people with diabetes are twice as high as the people that don't have diabetes. Uh, and, and if one out of 10 Americans currently diagnosed with type 2 diabetes, uh, you may be thinking that you have a 90% chance of avoiding the diagnosis. But keep in mind that actual cases may be much higher than what's being reported. And those cases are growing super fast. The number of adult, adults diagnosed with diabetes has more than doubled in the last 20 years. And as the American population has aged and become more overweight or obese, that number just keeps getting higher and higher. But let's talk about what does it mean to be insulin resistant? Insulin resistance occurs when the body cells become resistant to the effects of insulin, which is a hormone produced by the pancreas that helps regulate the blood sugar levels inside the body. As a result, the body produces more insulin to try and compensate for this resistance, but eventually the pancreas can no longer keep up with those blood sugar levels as they become high. This is what's known as type 2 diabetes. Insulin resistance is an important issue to be aware of because it can lead to a number of serious health problems. Besides diabetes, this includes heart disease, risk for stroke, kidney disease, and even blindness. First, let's talk about insulin and how the body uses it. Insulin is a hormone that's produced by the pancreas and plays a crucial role in regulating the amount of glucose or sugar in the bloodstream. Its main role is to facil uh, facilitate the uptake of glucose by cells in the body where it can be used for energy or stored for later use. I like to think of insulin as like a real estate agent who's trying to match apartments, your cells, with tenants being the blood sugar. The apartments need tenants to function, so your insulin hormone helps unlock the apartments for tenants to reside in so that they can function. Insulin unlocks the cell's receptors so that glucose, so that blood sugar, can find its way inside. So after a meal, when glucose levels in the bloodstream rise, the pancreas releases insulin into the bloodstream. Insulin binds to those receptors on the surface of cells, which signals the cells to take on glucose from the bloodstream. Now, once inside the cells, the glucose can be used to fuel that metabolic processes, or they can be stored as glycogen inside the liver and muscles for later use. Insulin also plays a role in regulating the metabolism of other nutrients, such as fats and proteins. It stimulates the uptake of fatty acids by those fat cells and the synthesis of fatty acids inside the liver. Insulin also helps promote the uptake of amino acids by cells, which can be used for a protein synthesis. So let's get back to insulin resistance, which occurs when the body cells become less responsive to those effects of insulin. Now this can happen to uh, a number of factors, including genetics, obesity, physical inactivity, or just an unhealthy diet. Now, when cells become resistant to insulin, it's like that apartment building saying, hey, we're all full up, we can't take any more tenants. Now, this poses a problem because that glucose remains in the bloodstream. It's kind of like a housing crisis for your glucose as it has nowhere to go. Now, this can cause a host of uh, a lot of other problems like rigid blood cells or uh, blood vessels, increased oxidative stress, inflammation, nerve damage, and can even damage the immune system. Now, let's explore some, some of those risk factors that contribute to being insulin resistant. Obesity is a significant factor for insulin resistance because it leads to an increase in fat cells, which can release inflammatory chemicals that interfere with insulin signal, signaling. Additionally, excess body fat can lead to the accumulation of fat in organs such as the liver and pancreas, which can also interfere with insulin sensitivity. Now, physical inactivity can also con contribute to resistance by leading to reduction in muscle mass. Now, this is important for glucose uptake. When muscles are not used frequently, they become less responsive to insulin and less able to take up glucose from the bloodstream. It just doesn't need it. Now, an unhealthy diet that's high in sugar, refined carbohydrates, uh, and unhealthy fats can also contribute to the resistance of insulin. 
Now, these fo foods can cause a rapid rise in blood sugar levels, which can lead to an overproduction of insulin. Over time, this can really uh, lead to the development of insulin resistance. Getting older is also a factor. As we age, our cells become less sensitive to the effects of insulin. And the pancreas may produce less insulin in a response to rising blood sugar levels. And this can lead to a condition known as impaired glucose tolerance, which is a precursor to type two diabetes. Now, finally, genetics also plays a role in the development of insulin resistance. Some people may, more, uh, may be more genetically predisposed to developing insulin resistance. And this risk can be increased by lifestyle factors such as obesity and physical inactivity. But what happens when too much blood sugar accumulates in the bloodstream? So like we discussed before, there, there just isn't enough housing for people to live. They are regulated to living on the street. The same is true with glucose or blood sugar. If it cannot find cells to live in, it uh, to be converted to energy or be stored as fat, the blood sugars are forced to stay on the street or your blood vessels and can cause some havoc in your body by just staying there. The human body is designed to maintain relatively constant levels of glucose in the blood. Glucose is the primary source of energy in the body cells, and it's tightly regulated to ensure that it stays within that narrow range. When blood sugar levels rise above this range, it can have uh, negative effects inside the body. First, high blood sugar can damage blood vessels throughout the body. The excess glucose can cause the blood vessels to become very stiff and thickened which can reduce the blood flows to organs and tissues. So over time, this can lead to a range of complications like heart disease, stroke, kidney disease, and nerve damage. Second, high blood sugar can lead to inflammation throughout the body. The excess glucose can cause the body to produce more reactive oxygen species, or ROS, or we know them as free radicals, which can damage cells and tissues. This can contribute to chronic inflammation, which is associated with a range of diseases, including heart disease, cancer, and autoimmune disorders. Third, high blood sugar can damage the body's nerves. Excess glucose can accumulate in nerve cells and cause damage to uh, what's called the myelin sheath that surrounds and protects the nerves. This can lead to a range of symptoms, including numbness, maybe some tingling, loss of sensation in those extremities. Finally, high blood sugar can impair the body's immune system. Excess glucose can weaken the immune system and make it more difficult for the body to fight off infections. And this can increase the risk of infections and make it harder for the body to recover from everyday illness. Insulin resistance can also, as we discussed, lead to diabetes. Insulin resistance is a major factor for type two diabetes, which is a chronic condition that affects millions of people worldwide. Now the word diabetes comes from the Greek word uh, uh, I don't even know how to pronounce it in Greek, a diabenon, which uh, it means to pass through or siphon. Now, this refers to excessive urination and thirst. That's a common symptom with diabetes. Now, the, the term diabetes was first used in the English language in the early 16th century to describe the condition of passing excess urine. In the 17th century, the English physician Thomas Willis coined the term diabetes mellitus, which means honey sweet diabetes. This name was given because of urine with people with diabetes mellitus has a sweet taste due to the presence of excess glucose. How they determine it tastes like that? Don't ask me, I really don't want to know. But today diabetes refers to a group of meta metabolic disorders characterized by high blood sugar levels over a prolonged period of time. Now, the two main types of diabetes are type 1 and type 2. Type 1, uh, are, they're very, type, type one and type 2 are very two distinct forms, um, and they differ in their underlying causes, the treatment of them, and how you manage them. Uh, type 1 diabetes, it's actually an autoimmune condition, which causes the immune system to mistakenly attack and destroy those beta cells in our pancreas, and that's what produces insulin inside of our body. As a result, the pancreas are unable to produce enough insulin to regulate blood sugars, and people with type 1 diabetes require insulin therapy to survive. So type 1 diabetes, they typically develop that through childhood or adolescence, though it, it can really occur at any age. And the exact cause of type 1 diabetes is not even fully understood yet, but it's thought to be a combination of genetic and environmental factors. 
There's currently no cure for type 1 diabetes, and medications used to treat type 2 diabetes are not effective for to treat people with type 1 diabetes. Now, medicinal options for people with type 1 that includes a lot of insulin therapy. Insulin therapy is really the cornerstone of treatment for type 1 diabetes. Uh, it can be administered through injections, such as an insulin pump, um, or just through a syringe. But the goal of insulin therapy is to mimic the natural pattern of insulin uh, inside the body and maintain blood sugar levels within a normal range. So type 2 diabetes, though, differs from type 1 diabetes because it's a metabolic condition in which the body becomes resistant to the, effect of, uh, the effects of insulin. Uh, and the pancreas is just unable to produce enough insulin to compensate. Type 2, it's, as we discussed before, it's the most common form of diabetes, uh, and it accounts for about 90 to 95% of overall cases. Uh, it's often associated with lifestyle factors, such as uh, obesity, physical inactivity, unhealthy diet, although genetics can play a role in its development. Type 2 diabetes is typically managed with lifestyle modifications, such as exercise, as well as modifications or eh, modifications, medications to improve insulin sensitivity and regulate those blood sugar levels. So there's medicinal options for type 2 diabetes uh, that also may include insulin therapy because patients may require insulin therapy to help manage their blood sugar level. So there's a lot of different medications on the market right now to really help people with type 2 diabetes uh, maintain proper blood sugar levels. So it's important to note that medications alone uh, aren't enough to manage type 2 diabetes. We really need those lifestyle changes, such as diet, exercise. Uh, they're crucial for managing uh, that, this condition. Additionally, the specific medication or combination of medications used will depend on individual factors, such as your age, health status, and maybe any other medical conditions. So to recap, type 1 diabetes is an autoimmune condition where the pancreas is an, unable to produce enough insulin, where type two is a metabolic condition, which the body becomes resistant to the effects of insulin. So insulin resistance is a precursor to that type two diabetes. When the body becomes resistant to insulin, the pancreas must produce more to keep up with the blood sugar levels and keep those in check. So over time, the pancreas may become exhausted and unable to produce enough insulin leading to a high blood sugar levels. So how does your age play a role in insulin resistance? Because this is kind of interesting. There is this relationship between insulin resistance and aging. Insulin resistance uh, increases with age and is one of the main factors to contribute to age-related decline in glucose tolerance. As we age, our cells become less sensitive to the effects of insulin, and the pancreas may produce less insulin as a response. This can lead to a condition known as impaired glucose tolerance, which again is a precursor to type 2 diabetes. Insulin resistance can also contribute to other age-related health problems such as uh, cardiovascular disease, um, cognitive decline, and inflammation. And it's thought that insulin resistance may, become, uh, may contribute to these conditions by promoting the release of inflammatory chemicals and other factors that can damage the cells and, and tissues inside the body. Uh, however, it's important to note that everyone uh, or not everyone will experience insulin resistance um, as they age. Maintaining a healthy lifestyle, regular exercise, healthy diet, these can all help prevent or manage insulin resistance and reduce your overall risk of age-related health problems. So how can we manage our insulin resistant risk? And there's several, as we mentioned before, and we're going to talk, dive down into some of these lifestyle changes that can really help manage insulin resistance for you. These things include exercising and exercising regularly. So exercise is one of the most effective ways to improve insulin sensitivity. Regular exercise to lower blood sugar levels and increase insulin. Uh, they aim for about 30 minutes of moderate intensity exercise per day, five days a week. Eat a healthy diet, uh, a, a healthy diet that's low in processed foods, high in fruit, uh, fruits, high in vegetables, whole grains, lean protein. These can all help improve insulin sensitivity. You want to avoid the foods that are high in sugar and high in refined carbohydrates. 
Also, you want to lose weight. If you are over, overweight or obese, losing weight can help improve insulin sensitivity. Even losing a very small amount of weight can make a huge difference. Stress. Managing stress is huge. Chronic stress can lead to elevated levels of cortisol, a, a hormone that can interfere with insulin sensitivity. Managing stress through techniques like meditation, yoga, deep breathing exercises, those can all help improve your insulin sensitivity. Sleep. Sleep is huge. So make sure you get enough sleep. Lack of sleep can disrupt the body's ability to regulate blood sugar levels and can lead to insulin resistance. Aim for at least a good seven hours of sleep every single night. Insulin resistance is a serious health concern and as we discussed, can lead to a number of serious health problems. Even if you haven't been diagnosed with diabetes, it's important to understand how your body uses insulin. Why it's important to understand why your body may become insulin resistant and how you can take precautions now so that you don't suffer from the consequences, especially as we get older. Lifestyle behaviors such as exercise, healthy diet, weight loss, stress management, and getting enough sleep, insulin resistance can be managed and the risk of developing things like type two diabetes can be, re be reduced.